video today, I'll show you how I paint these cute little pumpkins. They're super simple and easy enough for anybody to do. And at the end of the video, we'll turn them into little tags and also little Thanksgiving place settings. The materials you'll need to paint these are any type of pointed round watercolor brush. This is my Princeton Velvet Touch in a size six, and it comes to a really nice point. I like that for these pumpkins. And then you'll need your watercolors. And these are my Windsor and Newton and Daniel Smith and Holbein watercolors. You also need a pot of water. Mine is off to the side over here. And I have a sponge or you can just grab a paper towel to dab your brush on. And then you need your watercolor paper. And today I'm using my Canson watercolor paper. So to start off, I'll mix my colors. I've already got some here from the pumpkins I painted previously, but I used my Ariolan yellow and a touch of my Scarlet Lake for this yellowy orange. Then for the deeper orange, I used some um, Indian red, Scarlet Lake, and then some burnt umber. For my greens on the stem, I'll re-wet this. And I use sap green and some burnt umber to give me a beautiful autumn color green. All right, I have just a small piece of watercolor paper here that's just leftover scrap. And I'll paint a row of these simple pumpkins on here. So to start off, I'll pick up my light yellowy orange color and I'm going to make this first section in the middle just by drawing an oval and filling that in. The size and shape of your pumpkin just depends on how you shape this first oval. So if you want it tall, make it taller, short and fat, make it short and fatter. The second section, I'm going to start right here and leave some white space and just make a crescent shape next to that section and not come down and tucking it in kind of just right there, not going below it. Okay, I'll do the same thing on this other side. And I'm kind of backwards here. It's kind of at a weird angle. You can have some of the white space touch the other section. It doesn't have to be perfectly separated. You don't want to leave too much space, but that white space will help be the sections of the pumpkin. Okay, I'm going to do two more sections, and these will be my skinniest ones. Again, starting at the top, the tip of my brush, making this skinny crescent shape. And it's about like that. I'm going to do this kind of quickly so that it doesn't dry. We're going to drop in some more color. So it looks like I need to rewet some of these sections here. Now you're going to pick up your darker orange and I'll just drop it in to this wet color. Kind of outlining these shapes, just randomly dropping it in. In this section, here, this one's kind of dry, so I'll go back in with some water, spread that around. Okay, I'll we'll just leave that alone and let that dry. Moving on to the stem, I'll take sap green. And burnt umber, this mixture here. I like a really olive brown green when I'm painting with fall colors. For this little stem, I'm going to just take the tip of my brush and draw some strokes going up away from the pumpkin. And I'll have it go this way. Just kind of lean over to the left here. And I'm going to leave some white space for this too. Keep 
touch into the wet orange, it will bleed a little bit, and that's okay. And then I'll just close off the top here. Little strokes. And call that good for our stem. For the leaf, we'll take the same color. Just a tiny little stem for the leaf right here. Push down and wiggle my brush. And do the same on the other side. And just create a wiggly little leaf. For the little curly Q vines, you just take the very tip of your brush and really lightly, you're going to draw these little curly cues. So that's it. That's all there is to it. The main things that you're looking for are keeping the white space between your sections and keeping it wet so that you can drop in the darker color later and let it blend in together like that. So let's paint a few more and just keep practicing these pumpkins. I'm going to make this pumpkin next a taller, skinnier pumpkin. This time I'm going to use some more water so hopefully it doesn't dry so quickly. My second section. Then over again on the left side here. Last one. Make this really skinny. Now I'm ready to pick up my darker color. Darker orange. Drop that in at the top and let it bleed down. Try on this section. I'm trying to get some darker orange. There we go. Got a little bit dry on this end, so let's see what that and blend this in here too. And again with the stem, contrast them, little strokes going up. And this one did bleed into the orange, and that's okay. You can just leave it, or if it bothers you, you can clean it up and put some orange there. Here's my little leaf again. I think I'll just leave the two like that. Yeah, let's do another one right over here. With my light yellow orange, which my oval shape. Making sure it's got enough water. I do this one quickly. Second section, do some white space. Third, over to the left here. Last two sections. Okay, while it's still wet, start dropping in this darker orange. My paint has dried here and right here. I'll just give a little help, just re wetting that. I'll give this a little kind of a longer stem.
Turning over to the right. We're dropping some darker green on this one. Making those cute little curly cues. I'll try to save them for two over here. One. Okay, and there you have it. So we can turn these little pumpkins into tags after they dry. And I'm also going to show you how you can make some cute table place settings with your guest name on it for Thanksgiving. All right, I've got this piece of paper and I've cut it out into the size. It was four and a half by seven. And that's just a random size because I had this, this size of paper. But um, so it doesn't matter what size you make it. And then I've just scored it here in the middle so that I can fold this in half when I'm done painting the name and the pumpkins. So what I want to do is write the name right here with two pumpkins on the end. So I think I'll paint my pumpkins first and then I'll write the name so I know how much room I have. I'll try and keep them a little bit taller and skinnier so I can fit them on the end. Now I'll just write the name in between here and then we'll fold this over and we'll have a cute little a name for a place setting. My daughter's name is Amber so I just wrote her name for this. Now I'm taking my Tombow brush pen with a hard tip and I will go ahead and fill in her name. Can you all just take this little card, flip it over, then on that square line. And then you have a cute little card for Thanksgiving place setting. I could have bumped it over just a little bit. <laughs> just do a better job than I did, I guess. So that's it. Those pumpkins are super simple, but they turn out really cute. You can do all kinds of projects with them. And like I said with those other ones, you can turn those into tags just by cutting them out. And then they look like this in the end. Popping a little hole in there and adding some string. And then you have a cute little tag for Thanksgiving. You can add these to your Thanksgiving goodie bags or gifts, whatever you do for Thanksgiving. I wanted to try to make that name tag for the place setting one more time and see if I can do a little bit better job at centering the name. So I'm just going to hurry and speed through this. I also wanted to try to write the name with my watercolor brush instead of my brush pen. So I'm just doing that here. So that's it for this video. Thanks so much for watching and let me know if you have any questions in the comments below.